Hello everyone, so we are Kate Zakosa, Sebastian, and Artemy, and this is our fluid mechanical dissection. So the system that we were asked to analyze is the small engine here, and what we chose to focus on inside of that engine is that journal bearing that connects the conrod to the crankshaft over there. In terms of some basics on journal bearings, um, they're able to handle the largest loads while seeing the lowest wear of all bearing types. Um, how they're able to do this is actually with a very simple design. As you can see there by the picture on the right, it is simply a shaft spinning inside of a sleeve separated by a very, very thin coating of some kind of fluid. As you can see, when the shaft moves eccentrically due to a load, um, it creates a very narrow region of very high pressure, which then creates a, a pressure force, a stabilizing force, countering that load and making the shaft come to a sort of eccentric equilibrium in this case. Um, now, this is actually how they're able to see such high loads while seeing absolutely no wear is by eliminating all solid to solid contact. Here is our streamlined diagram. You can see as the journal rotates that our fluid circulates around our sleeve. Now, the fluid continuously moves from a cross-sectional area that is decreasing and then increasing. In a Venturi, as the cross-sectional area decreases, the pressure also decreases. However, in our journal bearing, you can see as our cross-sectional area decreases, our pressure actually increases. Yeah, so why does this happen and what does the Reynolds number represent? Looking here on the right, we take the Navier-Stokes equation for the steady state, and this simplifies to two terms that determine your pressure gradient. A term on the left, that is a convective term, and a term on the right, that's a viscous term. By taking the ratio of these two terms, you get the Reynolds number. Now, what this allows you to see is that for a high Reynolds number, you get flow that is governed by the convective forces and, it, and that creates turbulent flow. And for a low Reynolds number, you get flow that's governed by the viscous forces creating laminar flow. Now, how do you get a low Reynolds number? One way is by taking the delta H in the Reynolds equation and making it, and making it very small. And we saw this in our engine with only a 20 micron gap for the fluid. With this 20 micron gap, you can calculate the Reynolds number as we did here for both motor oil and air. As you can see, the Reynolds number for motor oil is very small, meaning that its viscous forces has a very high effect on its pressure distribution. But relatively, both of these Reynolds numbers are low, so both can be approximated by laminar flow. With this laminar flow, and assuming the flow is also steady and incompressible, you can simplify the Navier-Stokes equation to the two terms on the right-hand side of the equal sign. This allows us to get the Reynolds steady equation for unidirectional flow in a thin film. So when our bearing is rotating and it is, it is experiences a load, we can see a displacement delta R. This displacement delta R creates, uh, creates a decrease in the cross-sectional area and we can use the equation from the last slide to then solve for the pressure gradient given this geometry. We then integrate our pressure gradient to solve for our pressure, and then integrate our pressure over an area to solve for a force. Given these parameters on the right, for our given geometry and our fluid properties, we found that the restoring force that this bearing created was on the order of 7,000 newtons. Right, so we wanted to validate all of this math uh, with a real-life test. So the test we chose to do is to vary the fluid that we actually use in the journal bearing we were analyzing. Um, now, in this case, we had three uh, different fluids that we were using, one of them air, then WD-40, and then motor oil. These, as you can see, have a rising viscosity from one to the next. And what we expected to happen here is since we were running an engine uh, using a drill with a constant power output, we expected that as the fluid becomes more viscous, it prevents solid to solid contact better, therefore decreasing losses and therefore increasing the RPM that the engine can run at with the same power from the drill. Um, now, as you can see, with the rising viscosities, there would also be a rise in viscous losses, but we expected these to not have as severe of an effect as actual solid to solid contact, and therefore the RPM would still increase with the uh, increasing viscosity. And as you can see from this test here, um, that is actually exactly what happened. So you can not only see that on the left side there, the engine with the air quote unquote journal bearing is spinning visibly much slower than the one with motor oil, but you can also see the measured RPM is actually very clearly increasing with increasing viscosity. Um, and that is how we verified uh, the results that we calculated with our math. Thank you. That was the one, boy. That was awesome. Thank you. It was a very nice. Did it.